This is Rick. No clue what's going on. <laughs> well, today what I wanted to talk about uh, is bushcraft books and more specifically books for uh, beginners, bushcraft beginners. If you're looking to kind of get into bushcraft, there's a wealth of books out there and I thought I'd give some thoughts on some of my favorite books that I've picked up over the years. I kind of took the idea of thinking if somebody was over at my house and they were kind of, you know, over for a beer or something and they wanted to get into bushcraft or they were asking about it and I was looking across my bookshelf like what books would I hand them and say go away and uh, read these and obviously everybody has their own preferences and there are books out there on very specific things from navigation to spoon carving, wood chopping, all manner of uh, specialized subjects. So yeah, without further ado, let's uh, get into the first book. The first one I've got here is 10 Bushcraft Books by Richard Graves. Now obviously, as the name suggests, it was originally in 10 different volumes and um, covering a range of different subjects. Um, and they are all now compiled into this kind of one handy book that you can uh, pick up all in one, one place. Uh, Richard Graves was a, an Australian, he was Irish born, um, moved to Australia at a young age, uh, I believe in 1911, and uh, he served in the First and Second World War. He founded the Australian Jungle Rescue Regiment. He was training soldiers about bushcraft skills, about how to survive in the bush, essentially. And I believe that this is actually one of the first books. This came out in, I think, the 50s originally. Um, and it was one of the first books to actually coin the phrase bushcraft, or at least popularize it. Um, and then when he left, when he finished through the Second, uh, Second World War, he set up a bushcraft school, which he ran for 20 years. And of course, a lot of the content within this is probably what he would have taught in that bushcraft school. But the reason why I like this book is because it's, it's a really well-rounded sort of general skills base, and it's very practical. And what I mean by practical is, you need to go and practice these things. It's not really a theory book. It's not, you know, there's nothing too sort of um, heavy or dense when it comes to reading. It's very kind of pictorial and very picture heavy. And I imagine that a lot of these projects that you find in here would have been the types of things that he would have taught uh, in his school. How to make rope and cordage in nature, you know, how to make I'm just looking through the chapters here, you know, um, how to make knots, lashings, camp furniture, um, chairs, how to thatch roofs, things like that. Some very practical skills that would that are literally about setting up camp in the bush. And the thing I really like about Richard Graves' book is that it's it is definitely, you know, beginner friendly for someone who is just getting into bushcraft but I find myself flicking through it all the time and I'm constantly finding new projects to kind of to try out in the woods and um, you know different ways of making pots and pot hangers and different ways to make camp furniture and different shelters to build so there's so many projects in here and I don't think you'll ever run out of things to do if you have this uh, with you so that's the 10 bushcraft books by Richard Graves the second book I wanted to share with you guys today is Out on the Land by Lars Felt and Ray Mears. Um, this is quite a recent book. I think this came out in 2016. If I can see in the, yeah, 2016. Um, and the reason I chose this book, or the reason why I love it so much is, obviously there's a lot of good content in it, but just the actual size of it. Um, the, that other book that we were looking at, the, the, the Richard Graves book, um, it's very pictorial and very illustrative, but the pictures themselves sometimes it can be kind of difficult to figure out what it is that he's actually trying to trying to um, trying to represent in those pictures the, the, the kind of the hand-drawn things I imagine he probably used it as a kind of a companion to his bushcraft school but if you're reading it by yourself at home sometimes it can be difficult to see in the drawings but when you compare that to this book um, I mean, these color images are so clear and so concise um, and it's really, really easy to like flick through this and understand what it is that uh, you're trying to achieve. This has almost everything that I can imagine you might need in a bushcraft book. Obviously, Ray Mears and Lars Feltz, they both have a lot of books that they've produced over the years and they're all fantastic. But I feel like this book itself is like a culmination of a lot of things um, that they've obviously mastered over the years. 
Um, it's called, it's, it's about kind of the northern forest and boreal bushcraft, um, but I wouldn't let that sort of deter you because most of the stuff that's in this uh, book is, is applicable no matter where you live in the world. Um, but again, yeah, you're gonna find everything in here from really useful knots and really clear photographs, as I said, to you know maintaining your tools, sharpening your tools, how to hold your knife, how to use your knife, um, how to hang your tarp, first aid, basic first aid, basic navigation. I mean, it has it has everything in it. It's it's one of my favorite books, and again, I constantly come back to it. I'm constantly looking for uh, for new new inspiration in it. There's even some recipes in here, how to cook fish, how to make bread. It's just, it's so comprehensive. How to make snowshoes. It's, yeah, it's a great book. I really, really love this one. And I'm lucky enough to have a signed copy <laughs> of, from Ray. Um, so this is one that I will uh, never let out of my sight. It's Out on the Land by Lars Felt and Ray Mears. And finally, the last book, um, which sadly enough, I actually don't have a physical copy of it anymore. Um, somewhere between moving home from Ireland to Sweden or Sweden to somewhere along the line my copy of this book um, went missing but I do have a PDF version of it here so um, the one I have is called it's Northern Bushcraft by Morris Kohansky um, I think it's just called Bushcraft now for anybody who maybe doesn't know who Morris Kohansky was he died a couple of years ago but he is an absolute legend in the outdoor scene Canadian bushcraft and wilderness instructor extremely knowledgeable, a wealth, a, a lifetime of knowledge that he's condensed into these books. And the reason I've chosen this one is because it is similar to the first book we looked at with Richard Graves. It's very similar in sort of writing style and the kind of the illustration style, but it actually rounds out um, the stuff that isn't mentioned in Richard Graves' book. So the thing about the Kohansky book is that there's more of a focus on tools, so like knife, knife and axe work, um, you know, how to actually maintain those tools. If you get a chance to try and find Morris Gahansi's Bushcraft book, that is gonna be an excellent book to, uh, to add to your collection. Um, so yeah, everything from fire lighting to tool maintenance, how to, how to light your, I mean, there's some bow drill stuff in here, some primitive fire lighting techniques, um, some very advanced stuff as well, actually. So again, a book that you can kind of continue to go back to as you progress with your knowledge is always going to be a useful thing to have in your repertoire. So I hope that's useful and again I didn't want to make too much of a long-winded video here but it's just something that again I've seen come up. We all love our books especially in the outdoors everybody's very proud of their book collection. I, on, I only have maybe half of my books here because a lot of them are still back in Ireland um, from when I moved but hopefully I'll get, be able to get them over sometime. But I mean, there's a bunch of others and I kind of found it difficult to pick because I mean, Paul Kirtley has a very, uh, like very good book on, on uh, axe skills and camp craft. Um, obviously there's a lot of really good survival books, as I said, um, navigation, you know, both modern navigation and primitive navigation. There's, there's, there's a lot that I could talk about within those, even, you know, foraging and things. Again, I'm just looking at my, my bookshelf here, but but yeah, as a basic kind of starting point, I hope that's useful. If you have any questions, please let me know and I'll try and answer those as best I can. But yeah, until next time, thanks for watching and uh, yeah, hopefully I'll see you guys again soon. Take care.